Is it? it? Yeah, yes, I can see. You can. Thank you. Now, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, we are moving to uh, the final part of our discussion. Uh, payment and settlement system and uh, one more topic is left maybe next week we can cover and final uh, find uh, complete the course uh, on uh, financial stability that would be our last session and this payment and settlement uh, systems uh, session I'm not going to go into details. The reason is uh, we have basically cover up these uh, the instruments, uh, payment mechanisms time to time in our discussion. But uh, for the sake of completion, I have given you a kind of a complete slide set on the payment and settlement systems moving from their basic definitions to most uh, recent innovations in payment systems and also in addition to that i have given you a comprehensive short note on the uh, payment systems uh, i hope you have received both the lecture slides and the additional note have you seen it both Hello, any feedback? Can you uh, raise your voice because I can't see the chat. I can hear some messages coming in. Just confirm me whether you have received the additional note as well. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. So, which means uh, you have some comprehensive set of uh, information related to this payment system. Uh, as said, uh, I'm not going to the discussion in detail, which means slide by slide, I'm not going to touch on this. Uh, instead, what I will do today, I will basically take the uh, related exam questions into the payment and uh, settlements. And then uh, we will go through slides if needed, if some additional clarification is needed. Uh, hope it works, right? You, you are okay with that setup. And in that sense, you should have some additional pen and paper uh, for the discussion on the questions on the exam paper. So I will take the first paper. Uh, the latest one, January 2021. And I think most of you have the papers with you already. Uh, okay, we'll start with the simple ones, then we'll go to the uh, structured questions. So this is the first one. What are the national level digital payment solutions recently introduced in Sri Lanka for local currency payments? National uh, digital solution. So these are the answers. The first one, Lanka QR code, just pay. Number three, answer A and C above, which means Lanka QR and just pay none of the above what is your answer
guys you have to actively participate otherwise we won't be able to do this any answer what are the national level digital payment solutions recently introduced in sri lanka lanka qr just pay answer c is both lanka qr and just pay answer d is none of the above a answer c or d i didn't hear properly can you say it again please let me uh, go back to the right what is the answer for uh, the first one someone knows the answer a okay a means qr code any other answers Sir, good morning. Can you uh, repeat the question again? Ah, uh, sure. What are the national level payment digital payment solutions recently introduced in Sri Lanka for local currency payments? Just pay. There are four answers. I'll repeat again. Right? Lanka QR, Just Pay, both Just Pay and Lanka QR, none of the above. The answer C. Answer C, which means Lanka QR code and just pay. Right now, in our slides, I have explained these uh, Lanka QR. Yeah, right. What is this QR code or QR based payment? It's a contactless payment method where payment is performed by scanning a QR code from a mobile app. This QR code is generated as a computer uh, coding, right? So what happens to make a QR code payment, the customer would scan the QR code displayed at the merchant's, uh, you know, desk or wherever with their smartphone to pay for the goods and, uh, and they, they enter the amount that they need to pay so, and the, submit it finally. So as a result, instantaneously, that will be basically debited from your account and credited to the merchants or vendors account. So this is like without cash, you make payments. It's very fast and easier in many countries. I think uh, even in uh, less developed countries, we observe this QR code based payment. So it's only a matter of having a smartphone and your account is basically linked to that uh, or can be accessed through the uh, phone. So why this is really important? There are no transaction cost. Virtually it's very minimum. No hassle with the cash. Now we know cash is really difficult to handle. It's, it can be theft. It is bulky. Uh, sometimes when you have these, you know, small <coughs> denominations, <coughs> sorry, it's really cumbersome. And sometimes you don't get even these small denominations. You know, these examples, in most of the cases, you don't get two rupees, five rupees, even 10 rupees back <coughs> because of the uh, issue of the coins. And you can pay instantaneously and notification will be instantaneous you can purchase any good even i think now uh, services can be paid through qr mode payments if you go to for example uh, 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 let's say uh, salon for a haircut even there you can pay using the qr code even at the smaller vendor who's selling maybe tambili you can pay it's really 
easy uh, and also even for the merchant who's selling goods for him also for him, uh, they they have large panels so especially his cost is really reduced now when we use these post machines using the debit cards at uh, credit cards that involves cost to the merchant the post machine is generally 70000 80000 rupees qr code you don't have to have a post machine it's only a piece of paper having the qr code displayed okay. it's really easy and it's a revolutionizing the payment mechanism Based sir, that is uh, sir, just another pay. instrument of online online banking, no sir. Online banking yeah, another anyway. advanced in payment, yeah. right? Exactly, exactly. No cash is involved at all. For example, your salary goes to the bank account. All payments can be done through your phone. You don't need to touch cash. Even now, some banks uh, they allow this QR code to use for withdrawals of money as well. Right, so it's really convenient. Uh, just pay. So, 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 is, excuse me, just one more thing, one more question. So now, when we withdraw money from ATM, now they did have no five rupee. So, like mm -hmm. that, now when we use QR code, was also so now is there a service charge or something like that? uh that service charge actually charged by the banks for they are basically not not for you know the the mode of payment basically they are i think they are charging for their infrastructure to set up these atm machines and also uh, the location they have to pay a rent probably for those things so that may be the reason but ideally i think uh, it the, the such costs have to be really reduced some banks, I think, charging some high amounts for each and every transaction. Uh, it could be one-off payment, a simple payment, or I think most of the cases, uh, I think there is a possibility that uh, they can further reduce it. That is for actually providing the logistic, the machinery and all that. Okay. So in this uh, question, there is another one, just pay, right? Related to QR code, just pay is one of the payment product of uh, Sri Lanka introduced by Lanka Pay. Lanka Pay means basically uh, the the uh, I think you may have heard this institution Lanka Clear, Sri Lanka. Lanka Clear is basically one of the you now central bank is supporting the payment uh, instruments, payment mechanism. Lanka Clear is basically the institution established for this purpose as the payment infrastructure provider. It's a private company, but introduced by the central bank and also uh, owned by the central bank and all licensed banks. So it's not a government institution, it's a <clears throat> private entity but the ownership is with the central bank as well as all licensed bank they are operating uh, these uh, innovative payment gates lanka pay under lanka clear they have this lanka pay where they use this uh, mechanism for interbank payments so similarly out of that they have introduced this just pay it allows customers to make all retail payments using the smart mobile. So the, their facility, the, Q, the, the, the phone based payment is uh, defined as just pay, right? So using the smart mobile device, you can transfer funds, funds from one account to another account or to the merchant account directly right so it's a kind of a convenient secure affordable option for retail payments uh, in sri lanka now i think uh, right now uh, i don't know whether this has been revised the maximum transaction value per transaction is allowed i think uh, fifty thousand. uh but I, i'm sure these rates or the 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 limits 
could be revised going forward with the expansion of the demand for the usage of these facilities. So excuse me, just one mm -hmm. more question. Now, when we talk about digital banking, sir, mm -hmm. what is the most innovative bank in Sri Lanka? Because yesterday I heard one news on TV1 saying that uh, because this is relating to backlisting of People's Bank by China. Mm -hmm. So relating to one issue. So in that uh, news, it, it, it was mentioned that, sir, People's Bank is the most innovative digital bank in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure uh, whether those are related, but uh, I, I, I won't be able to mention a particular bank, right, in relation to their improvements or whatever. But in general, what I can say, <clears throat> Sri Lanka is ahead of most of the regional countries in terms of introducing these uh, new payment mechanisms. Now, I think the technology is there in Sri Lanka for most of the payment mechanisms. Even these, uh, I think, ATM cards. Sri Lanka was the very first car, uh, uh, the country to introduce those in the region. Uh, ATMs, I think, around 1987. And then uh, even these uh, large value payment mechanisms like RTGS, Sri Lanka introduced early in 2000. Similarly, these uh, QR code based payments, internet fund transferring, all these, I think Sri Lanka has been one of the pioneers in the region. So in that sense, we have done well. Most of the banks, they have done well in terms of introducing technology uh, for the transactions. Uh, in general, there may be some, you know, uh, kind of a, uh, banks which are not basically to the expected uh, level but most of them have done well in terms of introducing technology and adapting the technology into the banking okay and uh, i'm looking for some other questions in this paper Okay, question number four. There we have some, you know, products and instruments given. Uh, I think uh, some of these products we covered. Here we have an instrument. Question number four, one. A person who needs a non-cash electronic payment and a credit period to settle his consumption expenditure at no additional interest cost. The question is asking which would be the best financial uh, product. Sorry. Uh, excuse me, sir. No, could you please let me know what year the paper? Uh, we are talking about 2021. Still 2021. 2021. Question uh, number four. four. Uh, January paper, sir. Exactly. It was uh, only the, I mean, there was no other exam in 2021. January. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you okay did you find the question for one so here we have to uh, basically suggest advice which kind of a financial product or a service would be uh, important to fulfill uh, these uh, requirements of customers the only the first question is related related to other uh, related to uh, today's discussion other questions actually we have already covered <clears throat> so for one, a person who needs a non-cash electronic payment mechanism and a credit period to settle his consumption expenditure at no additional cost. So what is the best product for him? Credit card. Credit card, exactly. Okay. Now, credit card is issued by financial institutions. Uh, for the customers. It could be banks, even non-banks, they can issue this credit card. I think we have slides on credit card here. Yes. So it's one of the most common non-cash payment methods. A credit card is a non-cash payment method issued to users, which means the cardholder, 
to enable the cardholder to pay uh, uh, pay a certain sum for the merchant for the goods and services he has obtained and the cardholder would promise that he would pay to the card issuer uh, uh, the amount that he has basically spent. Now this is kind of a giving a loan for a certain period without any interest. The credit card company will provide you a kind of a, a limit the, the bank the will, will provide you a limit and within that limit you can make payments and that payment is actually you settle later without any interest that is the importance of the credit card you you postpone the payment i think in sri lanka around 51 days you get a uh, grace period you don't need to pay after that if you have exceeded the grace period then you have to pay your amount plus interest that is some additional charge okay so in other words if you settle your outstanding within the credit period interest uh, there won't be any interest otherwise financial institutions will charge interest on the outstanding balance. Now, the credit cards are today very popular and competitive. Many institutions offer credit cards at various, uh, you know, attractive benefits like discounts, other offers, seasonal promotions, rewards, bonus. There are a lot of additional features attached to a credit card today right uh, but the thing is normally credit cards are charged charging high interest for the default or for the late payment because you are already given the grace period some people ask why these credit cards are charging so high that is really understood because you are already given a grace period for 51 days or whatever so that's a reasonable time and if you exceed that the bank has to involve certain cost so that has to be charged from the customer that's why they have some uh, additional charges and fees for the late payments <clears throat> i think i don't need to uh, int introduce you the process of using a credit card it's a matter of you know presenting your credit card you have which you have obtained from the financial institution financial institutions are issuing the credit card actually based on the salary slip the strength of the salary slip so if your salary slip is really strong, you get a high value as your credit limit. If it is less, you get a lesser amount. And if you cannot prove your salary uh, earnings, sometimes you won't be able to get a credit card. There are some people, they have good incomes, but still they can't get a credit card because they can't prove their income. But sometimes, uh, really, depending on the bank's uh, uh, relationship with the uh, customer there is a possibility that uh, you can get a credit card now <clears throat> in terms of security of the payment i think most of the security features are added in the security uh, the credit card uh, i think uh, sometimes back the signature was a must so it's one of the uh, security features but since now there are some uh, enhance security features uh, in most of the cases signature is not required only uh, the tapping uh, would be sufficient to make the uh, credit card credit payment right so there are some improvements yeah in a credit card to have this uh, you know process complete uh, there should be three parties i think this uh, slide is important because in one of the previous papers, this question was there. The question was on uh, what are, uh, who are the parties involved in a, a completing a credit card transaction. Right? So basically there should be three parties. The first one is the acquirer. Acquiring bank, simply the acquirer is the bank 
or the financial institution that processes the credit or uh, debit card payment on behalf of the merchant. The merchant is only having the POS machine and he gets the credit card presented to him. When he uh, swipes the credit card or taps the credit card on the POS machine, the transaction has to be acquired by some financial institution. So the 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 acquirer bank will basically facilitate uh, this uh, transaction. In other words, acquirer would allow the merchant to accept the credit card payments from the uh, card issuing banks uh, with an association. Right? So that is the acquirer's role. The issuer is who is basically the card issuer. Uh, it's basically a uh, bank or a financial institution that provides a card association branded pay. So the card associations are basically some few associations are there in the uh, world like this Visa, MasterCard, uh, Amex, American Express, Discover things, uh, names like that. These are the brand names. They are the basically associations. They are the networks of these card only. And with the, with the joining of these associations, the issuers will issue the credit card. Issuer means simply your bank. If you are working with bank A, the bank A would issue a credit card with the uh, in conjunction with the <coughs> card association. So that's the issuer's role. Merchant who's basically uh, selling the goods and services and who's basically accepting uh, the payment. So the merchant account is a kind of a bank account that allows business to accept the payment in multiple ways. So it is basically uh, established under an agreement between the acceptor and the merchant acquiring bank for the settlement of the card transactions. So these two, three parties should be there to complete a credit card transaction. Okay. So I think uh, if you write down some of these facts under this question, what is a credit card? What are the benefits of this credit card? How it works? If you give some information, I think you will be able to get five marks for this question. Okay. Question number five, same question paper. Question number five, uh, I'll read the first question, the, the, the introduction of the question. Technology has significantly changed the service delivery channels of banks and other financial institutions. It has improved the efficiency of financial services and intermediation process. In this context, briefly explain the following. Okay. So there are four questions given, subparts given. You have to provide some uh, brief explanation or a description on each and every uh, aspect. The first one is the QR code retail payment method. I think we have already discussed QR. Uh, we don't need to discuss it further, I guess, because we have already done it. And you have to answer what is QR, what are the benefits of the QR, and how it works. Those are the, you know, covered, uh, uh, the should cover areas for this question. Question number two. The Sri, Sri Lanka interbank payment system slips. Does anyone having any answer for this? Here we have slips explained in your slide set. Slip is basically uh, the long name is Sri Lanka Interbank Payment System, commonly known as SLIPS. It's a LKR only online interbank payment method. 
only rupee transactions can be done using the slips network is the largest account to account fund transfer network in sri lanka i think most of the institutions are linked through the slips it is owned and created by lanka clear so it enables member banks to carry out transactions uh, on a day uh, up to 5 million rupees and it's a secure paperless uh, process it's only you know through the inter internet uh, you do these transactions and this is very popular for bulk payments like uh, standing orders salaries utility bill payments etc you can use this uh, so even for direct credit and debit transfers both sides you can use this so transaction is basically t0 plus basis on the same day basis the transaction happens uh, and these transactions are facilitated or settlement process is facilitated by the central bank right central bank is basically facilitating these transactions and there are number of transaction cycles per day i think three four cycles are there in the morning in the afternoon in the evening likewise as the bulk the all uh, transactions are settled now, for example i think uh, uh, in the past if you remember i don't know whether you remember uh, the payments for salaries most of the time they were paid at the premises at the accounts department or the salary department in government offices uh, there is a person called or a counter called shroff shroff means basically who's kind of a cashier he is basically on a salary day he issues the salaries in envelopes or whatever it's a kind of a cumbersome process once this slip was introduced now the institutions are routing your salary uh, through the slips mechanism directly to your bank you don't even know when the salary comes until unless you receives a message from the bank it directly goes to your bank account okay and uh, question number 3 on the same question is related to cloud computing cloud computing uh, this is actually not directly related to payment mechanisms but it's like uh, some uh, technology driven facility in the financial system in the modern times so cloud computing is a kind of an on demand availability of data storage and computing power so on the cloud cloud means like a space like internet the, the cloud is actually space there you can store your data and even do computing on the cloud and this technology is being adopted in the financial sector and the banks for the uh, financial services uh, the importance of cloud computing or cloud um, is basically uh, it is available to many users through the internet because there it's a large space there are no data data storage limits particularly so most of the people can use uh, the cloud uh, and also it is considered as some uh, secured way of storing data and also computing why it is important it allows firms to minimize some upfront cost on it 
now banks are investing heavily on it especially it infrastructure there are co banking system the servers other internet facilities payment mechanisms all these are related to huge or large investments in it infrastructure so this it infrastructure cost could be minimized using the cloud computing technology and also it is considered as some faster high computing power and less maintenance cost are involved in cloud right but uh, i think this is a uh, early I, in, in sri lanka i'm not so sure to which extent the cloud computing is used or the cloud is used but it's getting uh, popular in most of the countries then the next question pay and go machines pay and go machines they are called as kiosk I think we have a slide on that. Yes. What is a kiosk? It's a small temporary standalone booth used in high traffic areas for uh, purposes of transactions and marketing. Now, even in a bank, you can observe this uh, small internet enable digital and user friendly booth right it's like a simple uh, atm machine or a kind of a small smart unit uh, located even in the bank uh, verandas or in their halls or even in at the supermarkets and other convenient places for people to avail certain financial services it's like a self-serviced uh, unit. Normally, there will be only one or two individuals or officers to help in a kiosk. I remember in advanced countries, when you enter into a bank, now in Sri Lanka, when you enter into a bank, there are a lot of you know counters. First, you see the counters in the bank in Sri Lanka, right? But in most of the advanced country uh, commercial banks I have seen, when, they, when you enter into the bank, the, the, the waiting area is here really big. And there are a couple of officers there, only one or two officers are there, and they are directing you to a kiosk. So the kiosk is the machine, a kind of a, you go there and you on your own you do banking because it's really helpful everything is you know programmed and mechanized or uh, instructions are fed so you talk to or you go to the internet or you do your uh, transactions there and if you are unable to do anything and if you need some further banking services like taking a loan or you know enter into a trans uh, contract or whatever then you need to have some bank officers involvement then only you go to the counter right? so in between the kiosk is really helping to make the uh, financial transaction very easy and convenient right? so this is like uh, moving banks are moving to some uh, branchless banking there is a concept called branchless banking. Banks are only having few branches or no branches at all if this method is basically popularized. I know in Sri Lanka some banks, uh, their branches have been uh, removed. I remember one of the major banks located in WTC, World Trade Center, they removed their branch. Instead, they set up some kiosk there couple of kiosks only one or two bank officers are there to help so imagine the cost reduction of that methodology so based on the digital operation you can 
do this. Operating cost is really low. Uh, and I would also say that would promote financial inclusion because people then when you when you I mean get to use it you get familiar and you will not have any you know uh, kind of a uh, reluctance to use those things like the smartphone at the first instance you are scared to touch a smartphone especially elderly people but when you give it to them and when they are used for the device I think they are much faster and much active. Similarly, through this kiosk mechanism, the branchless banking, I think you can get people more involved in financial transaction. That is what is meant by uh, kiosk, uh, sorry, uh, financial inclusion. This is very common in advanced countries. There's one more question in this uh, 2021 paper, question number eight. I'll read the uh, introduction to the question first. As the lead regulator of the financial system, Central Bank of Sri Lanka is responsible to ensure the financial system stability of the country and to protect the system from any financial crisis. In this context, I answer the following question. So some of these questions actually we will cover next week, not today. But the last question is directly related to today's discussion. Number four, briefly describe the systemically important payment systems in Sri Lanka. Systemically important payment system. So systemically important payment systems means high value and wider high value also wider or some uh, uh, comprehensive payment and security settlement systems available in Sri Lanka. Systemically important means if you don't have it or if, if it is failed, the system will be affected. Financial system and entire payment mechanism will be affected. So this high value payment and security settlement systems are really important in an economy. That's why we call them as systemically important. In Sri Lanka, uh, we have number of uh, systemically important systems, major payment systems in Sri Lanka. So I think in this slide, you can see uh, there are some large value systems like RTGS systems. There are some retail value payment systems, as I said, operated by the Lanka Clear. The securities and settlement systems are there in Sri Lanka <clears throat> and foreign exchange settlement system is also there for foreign exchange uh, transactions. So among these number of uh, major payment systems, the RTGS and Lanka Secure, the first one and the third one, all are important. The first and the third one can be considered as the most important uh, payment systems or settlement systems in Sri Lanka. So therefore, in Sri Lanka, RTGS system and the Lanka Secure system are considered as the systemically important payment mechanism. What is RTGS? This is the you know entire payment in the architecture. Uh, Real time payment method. Sorry. Real time payment method. Yes, real-time gross settlement system. So this is used to settle high-value electronic payments in Sri Lanka. So it enables money to move from one bank to another on a real-time basis. Real-time basis means <coughs> instantaneously. And the settlement is immediate, final and Irrecoverable means you cannot reverse. <coughs> Sorry. In Sri Lanka, banks are using normally 
or generally customers don't use it right customers are not doing transactions in 50 million 100 million at once no uh, simple customers but mainly the banks they are using this facility for their large value payments okay so this is provided or supported by the central bank uh, for large value and time critical payments and at the same time the lanka secure system it is providing uh, security settlements mechanism in sri lanka for example if you buy a garment security the, the largest security market in sri lanka is the garment security market now right now the garment securities in are in the form of electronic securities no papers no scripts so you call them as scriptless securities so the scriptless payments scriptless security payments and settlements are happening through the lanka uh, secure system right lanka secure system so other than these two under lanka secure system there are two subsystems i'm not going to details because uh, if you have any other question on Lanka Secure, we might have some further discussion. In in the Lanka Secure, as I said, the system is divided into two scriptless security settlement and also CDS. CDS means central depositor. I think we discussed these depositories under various financial services. So scriptless security system, you have these securities without any paper. In the gum, now I have put a picture here. I think someone asked last week whether we can see this gamma security. So this uh, picture, the 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 red color picture here, it's a sample of gamma security which we have used in the past. So it's like a certificate. Now you don't have these securities anymore, the paper securities. You only have these. IC numbers now. IC numbers now, for example, for a bond, for a bill, you have separate IC numbers. So these IC numbers are used to identify the securities or name the securities without having any paper. So in a transaction, you only change the uh, ownership of this IC. Right? So see, it's really convenient and also very fast. And the CDS, when these transactions are happen, your transaction is secured and saved there. That is the registry when you do the transaction. So these two, uh, RTGS and the Lanka Secure are the most important systems in Sri Lanka. Why we call them as important? Failure of any of this system will lead to a failure in the financial system why because the entire payment and settlement mechanism will get disrupted if there is a failure that's why you call it as a systemically important payment system okay now let's go to uh, 2019 September paper. September paper. <clears throat> okay first question multiple choice questions probably you can give me an answer what is the most effective and efficient payment system available for for a large corporate to pay salaries to its employees there are a few answers given electronic fund transfer second one slips third one currency 
fourth one checks. Six, what is the six, six, six. six? Exactly. So we have already discussed now. Let me find out some other questions. Okay, in question two, there's a question. It's not directly on payment system, but it is actually linked to payment systems. Here, I will first I will read the description, then the question. Financial question number two. Huh? Financial institutions and markets play an important role in the financial intermediation process of the economy. This process exposes the financial institutions and markets to different types of risk. In this context, briefly explain the following. Uh, question two is related to our discussion. Explain how smartphones help to enhance access to finance in a modern society. Since you are smartphone experts, you might be having some idea. Any thought? Hmm? Tell me a couple of uh, reasons why you can use a smartphone to enhance uh, fin access to finance. In a modern society, um, excuse me, sir. Yes, uh, most of the financial institutions have introduced uh, various types of financial apps to promote mm -hmm. their business. Mm -hmm. and uh, through this, we can uh, trans. Uh, we can do transfer money, bill payments, uh, mm. and all kind of financial activities through these apps. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Uh, I think it's very relevant answer. I will elaborate it further. Now, smartphones. What is the role of a smartphone? It provides some digital platform, digital platform, isn't it? If it is for the payments, it provides some digital platform for banks to deliver banking services to their customers at any time and anywhere. This is the most important thing. This digital platform can be used at any time, 24 hours and anywhere. Anywhere in the world, if you have signals and if you have access to the uh, internet, right? So it provides some convenient payment solution through a kind of a digital wallet. So in a smartphone, it's like a wallet. You can store some money in your smartphone or you can access the bank account through the smartphone. As a result, you can identify smartphone as a method of mobile banking or sometimes you call it mobile wallet. These two slides are important, right? Mobile banking or mobile wallet. So instead of paying with cash, check or credit card or whatever, you simply use your mobile for the payments. Remember, uh, we discussed this QR based payment. There you use the mobile phone. So any payment or any transaction done through the mobile phone network it comes under this or it comes with the support of this 
smartphone. So they enable customers to carry out banking transactions, as I said, anytime, anywhere. And even you can have your passbook, account summary, statement on the mobile phone to check your balances or to do whatever the need for. Why it is important for financial access? Because the as I said, the smartphone is very you know accessible. Even a person who does not want to go to the bank, he would like to have a smartphone and access the bank through the smartphone. So that enhances access to finance. Also, since the smartphone can be used anywhere, even you don't have a bank branch in your area, you can still access the bank and do your transaction. That is the importance of the smartphone. Anytime, anywhere, anyone can use it. Now, this mobile banking and mobile wallet, it has become very popular in some uh, developing countries, right? We might think, okay, these are very convenient and widely used in uh, countries like, you know, advanced countries. It's not the case. Very poor countries, they have uh, used this uh, smartphone technology to enhance transactions and financial inclusion. I think the best example is Kenya. Kenya is a developing country. Uh, most of the parts of the country, they don't have, you know, adequate banking access or banking facilities. But their banking usage is really high through the smartphone, mobile phone. They have a company called, if I remember correctly, M Pisa. M Pisa. Pisa means not Pisa you eat. One of their buzzwords in African word, Pisa. P E Z A. So this M Pisa is mobile Pisa, like a smartphone based uh, banking technology or uh, kind of a wallet that they can use. So with the introduction of this m -Pesa, the banking habits and the usage of banks in Kenya have increased enormously. So that is the importance of this technology and the usage of the smartphone or bank. So even in Sri Lanka, I think most of the people who are even in the remote areas, they, they use this uh, facility. The smartphone is one of the game changers in the financial system. Okay, there's another question that is also related to uh, this uh, technology and payment related payments, uh, sorry, technology related payments. Question number five. Five, I'll read the introduction first. Technology has significantly changed the service delivery channels of banks and other financial institutions. It has improved the efficiency of financial services. However, these new technologies have given rise to certain risks that need to be managed prudently. So everywhere you have the risk. It's true. So question number one, briefly describe how branchless banking as a, serve, a delivery channel differ from traditional banking. So I use this word branchless banking, right? So how this branchless banking is uh, different from traditional banking? What do you mean by branchless banking? Branchless oh. banking, yes. Uh, shall I answer that? Please, yes, go ahead. Uh, this uh, branchless banking uh, go through the uh, digital wallets hmm. or digital uh, uh, systems, mm. uh, but traditional banking, uh, um, persons used to should visit to bank and they with uh, most lot of paperwork there. Correct. 
Correct. I think you have the idea, you know the answer. Uh, I will elaborate it further. Uh, does anyone having some other idea for the additions? Branch, branch, uh, traditional banking basically now going to a branch and you know getting the and branchless banking. So basically now involving with the technology, internet, and other payment methods. Right. Yeah, correct. Branchless banking is basically delivering banking services outside the conventional branches through the technology right traditionally what we had was some bank branches with staff with the infrastructure with premises and a lot of facilities right so it requires large number of staff to provide facilities and it was certain cost in a traditional branch based uh, banking setup I think uh, probably you may have heard the term brick and mortar type, right? So where you have the buildings and also machines over there. Branchless banking, it's like delivering banking services outside this traditional banking setup through technology, as you said. So what is this uh, delivery channels? What are the technology methods used there? I think there are one number of technology applications or methods used there, point of sale, post machines, terminals are there, right? Payment cards are part of branchless banking, internet banking also part of branchless banking. Mobile banking, we just discussed, even mobile wallets. Kiosk, kiosk are also very important part of branchless banking. I told you a bank can remove the entire staff and place only one or two staff members and a very small place to have effective banking through this kiosk. So branchless banking is considered as cost effective, efficient and faster for the customers. But the, there are some issues as issues as well one of the issues, I think, uh, sometimes for an effective financial transactions, you might need to have some interaction, right? For example, uh, you cannot have a loan facility, financial advisory effectively through branchless banking. Everything would be, I think, FAQs, you know, some pre-recorded things in the website or the machine. But you, if you need to have further information, you might need to have some face-to-face -face or human interaction with bank branch uh, bank officers. So that is lacking in branchless banking. And also, uh, we know the cyber security risks are there when you are relying on the technology. And technology risks are there. So that is applicable for branchless banking as well. So that risk is there, but otherwise, it is considered as a very effective, cost effective and faster way of doing uh, banking. So on the other hand, sir, now when we talk about digital banking, we have we have to reduce the number of staff, no, so we can anyway reduce now. Hmm. So it directly affects the labor market in Sri Lanka. Yeah, also. there are some other consequences as well. But uh, that's true. But the thinking is, uh, this is something else in, uh, not related to this discussion, but economically, what in economic sense, people think uh, true that will affect the job market and employment. But through the technology adoption, people will be, you know, adopted or transformed to some other, you know, way of providing labor right people might you know choosing some different way of providing labor and their service to the national economy so that is the argument true there could be some impact on the labor because of the technology 
that is true no? when you have technology you can reduce star by the same time uh, there could be some other spillover effect of technology for them to adapt for a new environment that is also there okay question number three of the same one same question briefly explain the common electronic fund transfer switch in sri lanka common electronic fund transfer switch in sri lanka does anyone having any idea lanka clear yeah it is operated and provided by lanka clear what is this shift I think we have some slides here. So SWIFT is a common, uh, the no, commonly known as common electronic fund transfer switch. It was implemented in August 2015. It is a fully automated paperless fund transfer system. Fully automated paperless fund transfer system that allow instantaneous fund transfers between the member banks. So in the SEF network, there are member banks. Among these member banks, the fund transfer is really fast and instantaneous. So as a result, it provides some real-time fund transfer using multiple payment channels. I think all these different payment channels, internet banking, mobile banking, ATM, everything is linked to this theft. So it's a common gateway. Right? So customer, I think in Sri Lanka, they can carry out uh, domestic interbank transfers up to 5 million on real-time basis. Uh, using these different payment methods. As you said, it is operated by the Lanka Clear and uh, Central Bank is basically currently, you know, involved in upgrading, improving this chef as an effective payment mechanism of the country. So the answer should cover it is basically a fully automated fund transfer mechanism for instantaneous fund transfers in Sri Lanka within member banks. So it's online real time fund transfers. So it is really convenient, safe, faster uh, for the customers and any payment delivery channels like internet banking, mobile banking, ATM, all these are linked through this SEFT. Let me check some more questions. Okay. Question number eight, last one of the same paper. List five examples for digital wallet, digital wallets used for payments and accepted by merchants globally. And explain. What are the examples for digital pay methods in the world? QR code. One is QR code. One is QR code, correct. Mm. 
smartphone payments digital smartphone payments. yes correct phone payments you can call it as phone pay using the digital wallets master cards master card is a kind of a uh, card association right they are providing the card facilities it's not a digital wallet but there are some brand names like uh, different companies multinationals have issued their own digital wallets i think you may have heard this uh, google pay right so google pay is a digital wallet platform developed by google and there is another one samsung pay premium Premi, is a yeah freemi is also it's local no basically in sri lanka we have freemi right but uh, what we are basically identifying here accepted by merchants globally right i'm not so sure whether freemi these are linked with international payments but simply uh, there are some famous ones google pay apple pay samsung pay even uh, this uh, Chinese company Alibaba Group, they have Alipay. All these are digital wallets or mobile based payments uh, used for transactions as a mean of uh, digital wallets. Okay, let me take one more paper. So I'm taking the another recent paper, March 2019. March 2019. Okay. The first one, so multiple choice. A digital currency established by, sorry, a digital currency established as money by law and issued by a central bank is known as what? Who answers Digital that? fiat currency. Digital fiat currency, yes. It should be the answer. The answers are the, the given answers are cryptocurrency, digital fiat currency, Bitcoin, currency notes and coins. So the correct answer should be digital fiat currency. Sometimes you call it as CBDC. Central Bank Digital Currency. I think I have a slide on that here. Yes, this is again an exam question. This slide briefly explained decentralized cryptocurrency and digital fiat currency. I think in this answer, the second one, digital fiat currency is central bank issued currency. You call them as CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency. It is centralized because it is issued by the central bank. Decentralized digital currency means basically the cryptocurrency issued by various other providers, not the central bank, private providers. And central bank does not have any control, no control. That's why you call it as decentralized digital currency payments. Right? So that is the answer. Question number 10 in the same one. Under which brand name Lanka Clear launched the common ATM switch in Sri Lanka? In Sri Lanka, we have a common ATM switch. I think uh, the most of the banks, I think almost every bank now, they are in the uh, process of this or oh, in this uh, linkage of this common ATM. In other words, you can go to any ATM and withdraw your money irrespective of your bank card, right? So for that matter, they will charge a minimum fee, but still you can use that 
other banks atm under this common atm suite so it's a kind of a unified atm mechanism so this was uh, launched under what name lanka pay lanka pay exactly so those are some uh, lakshapati type of questions let me get some uh, structured questions where you need to write down some of these facts question number 2 4 the question is give, uh, has some you know detail introduction financial intermediation is the key driver of the financial sector growth and uh, blah blah however the financial intermediation process should be achieved while ensuring financial stability in this context briefly explain the following with regard to the financial sector of sri lanka so the question 4 the role of rtgs and slips in facilitating an efficient and effective payment settlement process role of rtgs and slips what is the role of rtgs it, i think we already covered it provides large value payments uh, on a real time basis isn't it so it facilitates instantaneous transactions for large values among financial market players slips are basically helping to do small value bulk payments through online payment mechanism uh, and that facilitates corporates company uh, companies or so even the government departments to make their to do their transactions question number 3 that the question is related to money but there is one question that can be also covered under payment systems list two functions of money uh that could be served by the following instrument what are the two functions of money played by these instruments debit card what are the functions of money cap captured by this great uh, debit card uh refined debit card here debit card is a plastic card which provides alternative payment method when making uh, method to cash when making payments it's like an electronic check what are the functions of money by the way so can you remember have we discussed functions of money in this course yes yes what are they medium of exchange medium of exchange unit of account unit of account store of value store of value standard for deferred payments exactly excellent so credit card would fulfill which functions standard for deferred payments mm do we use credit card for debt payment ah oh, no sorry sir that's uh, store of value right? store of value exactly you can use it as store of value and also medium of exchange isn't it for the transactions you use it no you go to the shop and you do the buy something and you present the debit card so you can easily pay instantaneously the debit card the importance of the debit card compared to credit card is to use the debit card you have to have money in the account isn't it because when you pay from the debit card that will be directly linked to your bank account and the bank account will be debited that's why you call it debit card 
so you can use it for media for exchange credit card what are the functions it's a medium of exchange yes um what uh, uh can and the, the we can uh, use as a uh, debt instrument not debt instrument we can use it for deferred payments sir payment. deferred payment exactly you can use it for deferred payments so credit card fulfills two functions medium of exchange a standard of deferred payments a check again medium of exchange yes and not a standard for deferred standard payment of deferred payment exactly yes bitcoins bitcoins means virtual currencies or cryptocurrencies people use bitcoins to fulfill which functions of money you can use it for medium of exchange people use bitcoins to do transactions i saw recently one of the news one of these you know uh, uh, some uh, you know i can't remember the name and i don't want to tell the name uh, some shop famous brand name they have said uh, they are accepting bitcoins to sell their clothes i don't know whether it is true or not but what does that mean bitcoins can be used as a medium of exchange what else people buy bitcoin for for which purpose as a store of value as well not permitted in sri lanka recently also central bank clarified this bitcoins are not permitted in sri lanka but in some other countries people buy it for store of value as a store of value last one e wallet e wallet or mobile wallet medium of exchange deferred payment uh, e wallet actually mainly it's like medium of exchange and a store of value store of value you pay for transactions not mainly for pay debt okay Question number five: Technology plays a significant role in modern banking. The event of a new technology have helped to improve the efficiency of financial intermediation. However, these new technologies have given rise to certain risks and threats that needs to manage need to be managed prudently. Uh, the uh, first first question: Briefly describe online banking. and list out three transactions that could be carried out with online banking i think uh, it's very clear the idea of online banking is banking transactions are carried out through website or mobile app right so what are the functions or uh, transactions could be done you can use for payments you can check your account balances you can pay utility bills right you can even submit applications for account opening loan applications credit cards so all these are possible through online question 2 compare and contrast the benefits and disadvantages of 
carrying out banking transactions over teller counters and ATMs. Who are the teller counters? Cashiering at the branch. Yes. ATM means the ATM machine. So if you compare them, ATM can be accessible at any time, isn't it? But tellers, can you access at any point, any time? No, sir. The only, rest, the only banking hours. Banking hours. What else? No need to wait in the queues. No need to wait in the queues. But that depends, no? That depends on the location of ATM. Sometimes ATMs are busier than the tellers. Sometimes people, you know, people who are not familiar with using it, they are trying each and every option. Could be sometimes, but still compared to the teller, you will spend less time at a ATM. What else? Uh, can access anywhere at any point uh, uh, to withdraw deposit money through the ATM, sorry, not uh, deposit, withdraw money from uh, ATM? Yes, even you can deposit, no? That's a CDM? Yes, you can deposit. Through ATM, sir, but there are some limits per day up to a maximum amount only you can withdraw, but if you go to a branch, you can do whatever you want, you know? Yeah. And, Correct. What else? Uh, there is a charge uh, for with, uh, transaction through the ATM, but mm -hmm. when you are doing the counter, there is no no trans charges. transaction fee. Yes, correct. In terms of investment cost to set up an ATM, you have to incur a certain cost, right? but for manning a counter may not be that costly compared to an ATM. Over the time it could be costly, but if you compare at a certain point, the ATM could be much costlier, right? And also, sir, now ATM, ATMs now that is uh, through uh, technology, no, sir, you have to maintain it properly, otherwise yeah. there are errors. You know, sometimes it's not working. Yeah. So these technological issues are also there. Yeah. And also the risk of cyber fraud, isn't it? Technology fraud. I think recently also I heard yes. uh, one of the ATMs in Mineria. Uh, some person has unauthorizedly access, saying that he is the maintenance guy of the ATM. So almost, I think, 60 lakhs he has, he had been thrown from the ATA. Uh, so those are some risks involved in the machines. And also, sir, I have noticed now during our time and, you know, for this festival uh, season and when we have holidays, sometimes no money also, no, sir? No, right, yes. Yeah. Topping up will be kind of a delayed thing, no? That is applicable for banks also because on uh, our other seasons, uh, banks also not opening. Hmm. But still, you can access the ATM. Even there are some issues with the availability of money. How these banks set up ATMs? There should be an approval from central bank. You know, there are some prerequisites to to be complied with, sir. Hmm. And you have to ensure that uh, that ATM can serve some certain amount of people, isn't it? You have to have some customer base. Otherwise, uh, you will be having some cost only to the on the bank. Now, shall I ask you a general question? Do you use these uh, facilities available in Sri Lanka, for example, this ATM as common ATM? So, do you use it or what is your perception on that? Uh, 
I personally say don't do because to a, the, only at the minimum level because of this uh, cyber things and security. So, you know, we rely on the technology. We mm. don't know, no, sir, with, with respect to the security. Security is the main concern, sir. Mm. Cost is not a concern, right? I think they are charging 25 rupees for transaction. It's not a concern. Sorry, sir, I didn't get it. Cost, what do you think the cost, the charge for using the AT, common ATM, do you think it's a cost concern? I don't think no, sir, because now it's convenient. Anytime convenient, can go. yes. Yeah. yeah. If you compare with the convenience factor, I think that is really beneficial. Okay. So I think most of the uh, recent questions are mostly uh, aligned to those areas. In this slide set, most of these things I have basically, you know, covered from these uh, questions. If you look at the uh, the questions, I think they are very uh, broadly covered in these uh, past papers. Uh, one more thing I might say at the end, uh, in Sri Lanka, this uh, payment and settlement system responsibility is assigned to the central bank. There is a special act for that, Payment and Settlement Act 2005. We call it PSSA. Under this PSSA, the responsibility is assigned to the central bank in relation to payment system regulation, uh, the development, and also uh, introducing uh, new payment mechanisms and all that. Uh, there were some discussions to, you know, have some private payment providers and all that, uh, but that did not materialize. The central bank is basically having the leadership in the payment system in Sri Lanka. And the central bank is working towards introducing or uh, developing the payment and settlement infrastructure based on the latest technology. As you have seen, most of the latest uh, uh, technological improvements have been taken into consideration. For example, all these uh, mobile based payments, even the QR uh, code, and even at the moment, central bank is uh, looking at these cryptocurrency and virtual currencies. There are some studies going on in relation to developing the or looking at the possibility of having central bank based digital currencies. So a lot of things are happening with the uh, idea, uh, leadership of the central bank. But overall, the idea of the central bank under this payment and settlement processes that we should move to a less cash cash society less cash society earlier people were talking about a cashless society cashless means we don't have cash but i think it's not a practical thing we should have some cash but we, what we are talking is right now a cashless society not the cashless society a less cash society we have cash but at a minimum level to promote a less cash society we have to have these all these mobile based payments electronic fund transferring uh, and also qr based payments and all these uh, technology driven payment mechanisms should be improved and also uh, the the electronic usage of the instruments would be should be uh, improved rather than using the physical cash so that is the direction that the central bank is working towards. Okay. Uh, I think uh, with that, uh, we can uh, conclude this uh, discussion on uh, payment and settlement system. Uh, yes. uh, is there any idea of uh, when uh, our exams will be? It's in January, no? I think. January mid though? I have no idea about the timetable, but I was told it's in January. I think uh, mostly it will be in January. So get ready. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Um, sir, revision classes brochure yeah. has uploaded by the IBSL. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll give you an update on that. Give me a minute. Yes. Sure. So I have also shared this note, additional note. I think this is really uh, comprehensive. And I spent a lot of time on preparing this. So you may have some, you know, leisure time to read it uh, and see what I have uh, added uh, to you for, for you to get some understanding about the uh, latest uh, payment instruments or innovations. Okay. So that is some additional reading. Uh, let me also talk about these uh, revisions. Uh, I hope you can see this slide. Can you? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, tentatively, I think uh, this tentative in the sense, I think these dates are confirmed. Survey of financial system has uh, four revision sessions, right? Four revision sessions, uh, basically, uh, uh starting from 27th november uh i think almost 16 hours of revisions i think uh, it's a very good coverage of time uh, starting from uh, 27 and that weekend we have two sessions 27 28 both mornings and also next weekend uh, december 4th and 5th again uh, two evening sessions. So there we will be having some uh, revision to the materials that we had, mostly focusing on the past paper questions and the model type questions, right? So I think I don't know the mechanism for you to attend. Uh, just check with the IBSL. I'm just announcing you the dates. And the last day uh, I am I'm trying to, you know, have some, you know, exam with you so that will be helpful for you to uh, you know understand and prepare for the exam in a uh, very active and comprehensive manner uh, so i think those are the things that i have to cover for the day do you have any questions before we wind up Sir, not to get into this, sir. Yesterday I heard one more news, sir. Now, CVSL has imposed some restrictions on exports. Now, 10% of export should be converted into Sri Lankan rupees or something like this. But it was not that clear, sir. Any idea about uh, the, about this uh, new new restrictions, sir? Uh, that restrictions in the sense, some requirements were there, no? You have to uh, convert... Uh, uh, certain uh, export proceeds uh, and there are some uh, requirements on that uh, I am not so sure about the recent uh, I also saw that uh, press release issued by one of our departments I'm not in a, uh, I'm in position to give you a complete update on that what is the you know uh, basically the real requirement uh maybe i'll check on that further uh, i know there are some restrictions or the requirements right now to convert uh, but i'm not so sure what was the recent change in relation to this uh, is it okay if i check further and let you know next week no i should not so just just yesterday only yeah. i just saw this news yeah 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 there was a press release i also came to know about this press release i'm just trying to locate this press release give me a minute uh, What does that say, the recent one? Uh, now, there are already some uh, limits, no? Uh, limits in the sense requirements to convert, no? So, in addition, what this says, uh, as I understand, uh, from your export income, you can uh, 
make some payments, right? You might have some payments for your debt repayments, for your purchase of goods and all that. And after that, you might have some balance in your export income, right? So that balance has to be converted in the uh, seventh day of the next month. That is the requirement. As I understand from this uh, press release, did you get my point? So from your export income, you are making certain payments now. Maybe loan repayments, your purchases, your other current transactions, whatever. So after making those payments, you might be having some balance in dollars, right? What the central bank says, that balance has to be converted by the seventh day of the next month which means you have to convert all dollars into rupees the remaining dollars that is the latest uh, change okay i'll check it further and let you know what, the, what are the you know special yes sir thank you sir right let's conclude for the day and uh, we are reaching a very happy end one more session and we will be done and after that i think we are ready with the revision and i think you are one of the luckiest groups i might say because we very leisurely covered these things having some you know extra time and also you have some extra time for the exam also to prepare i mean uh, in a uh, very you know come uh, active manner uh, and also revision sessions for 16 hours is also i think very uh, good opportunity for you normally we have i think eight hour revision this time it has been doubled okay shall we stop here then yes, thank you sir